guys so i know this is a tractor channel but even for us tractor owners you got to admire some cool machinery this bombalite mini skid steer so i'm telling you you're going to want to see how these specs stack up to those small compact tractors it's just pretty incredible seeing what a tractor can do versus another machine that's roughly the same size so stick around so right about there, that was, I think we estimated we have 1,050 plus 700 plus some crates. So you're around 1,800, 1,850 pounds right in that ballpark that we were just lifting up with this tiny little machine right here. And you could see it was definitely starting to kind of teeter a little bit, um, but we had it off the ground, moved it from point A to point B. You can get a counterweight set for this as well that increases that um, operating capacity or the tipping capacity as well. But I think even for those of you that are not in the market for one of these machines that have a subcompact or a compact tractor, this is a tiny little footprint here and it is lifting way more than any subcompact or a small compact. In fact, it's semi-equivalent to about what a 3R series tractor or a Kubota Grandel, like a 3560. It's pretty incredible. I do want to mention really quick Bora Wheel Spacers. I'm really proud to have them as a channel sponsor. If you're looking for a quality made in America solution to fit your truck, your tractor, or your UTV, check out Bora Wheel Spacers. There's going to be a link down below. Hey, and if you want to help the channel out, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button and read through the description underneath the video or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. So we just got in this Bombalite Mini Skid Steer and I wanna go over the things that stand out to me about it. We're gonna certainly get to know this machine pretty well. I'm gonna keep it here, gonna do a lot of projects with it, future videos. So if there's something I don't cover right now in this video, leave a comment down below. We can help answer it down there or we can incorporate that into a future video as well. The biggest thing that stood out to me right away was really the simplistic nature of the entire machine. Everything from really just the limited knobs and buttons that are up in the operator station to even just the visual sight glasses. You're gonna see several of them scattered around the machine for different fluid and fuel levels. Even to the very simple quick attach system that is gonna be similar to the Toro Dingo and other small uh, mini skid steers. It's just a world of difference compared to a full-size skid steer like my John Deere 330G and for me, I really appreciate that. So here's a good look at the operator station on this side on, on the, uh, the silver cap is gonna be your hydraulic oil. You do have your diesel fuel on this side and then not a lot going on. I really like it. You have your throttle control down here. This joystick here is going to control the loader operation and the middle is a little lever to control whatever your third function would be. In this case, opening and closing the jaws of a grapple. And this left joystick is gonna control the motion of the machine. If you take a closer look at the panel itself, you have a couple switches, one for each of the lights that are standard on the track model. You have your parking brake switch, 12 volt outlet down here. And so this is a very simple gauge cluster. You can see the hour meter here, your RPMs, um, oil pressure as well. And then you're gonna have some alerts and monitors down here that will indicate different issues that may be going on. And you're also gonna have a preheater or a glow plug as well. And then of course, just your ignition. Now there are a handful of other features that really stood out to me. Number one is gonna be the three quarter inch thick plate all along the boom arm here. That's a pretty incredible feature. If you come up here and take a look at it, it is just very, very robust. And of course you have reinforced channel along the backside as well, but it just shows this is built for rugged applications. A little bit more about the loader. You're gonna see these additional auxiliary hydraulics are very well uh, hidden and protected inside the channel. You're also gonna have the safety brace here. So if you do need to service it and have maintenance, you can lock it out. So you're not gonna have to worry about anything falling down. You know, my John Deere 324E, it didn't even cross my mind when I purchased it to see if it had a case strain for the auxiliary hydraulics. Well, it didn't. However, I was happy to see that a case strain is standard equipment on this model right here. So I had already mentioned you have a light up here on the operator station, but you have an additional light that's on the boom as well. I'd love to see this on tractors, a lot more visibility at night. You're gonna have, of course, your standard Zerks all along here for easy maintenance. This is gonna be a self-leveling loader. So when you're raising up, it's gonna keep your load level. That's pretty awesome as well. And your raise and lower cylinders are also gonna be cushioned as well on both raising all the way up and lowering all the way down. So you do have a couple options. If you wanna get the wheel version, that's gonna be available with a Honda motor, uh, about 22 horsepower. You're gonna see in here, this is equipped on the track machine with a Kubota diesel engine. It's about 24 and a half horsepower. 
There's some other significant differences. Of course, one is going to be a price consideration either way, but you're going to have a lot greater lift capacity with the diesel version on the track machine. The Kubota diesel track machine is going to be equipped with a 40 liter diesel tank on it, while the Honda gas wheeled machine is going to have a 12 and a half liter tank. And two more considerations you might want to take into account. Uh, first, the gas machine, the wheeled machine, is going to go about double the top speed as the track machine will. So a measurement that I actually have never been able to find on tractors, if you know what it is or how to calculate it or where to find it, that'd be great. But Bombalite went ahead and did it for us on this, but the ground pressure on the wheel machine is 5.5 pounds per square inch, while on the track machine, you would expect to be lighter and it is it's about four pounds per square inch and this isn't really a feature you would find on tractors so much but this is a pre-cleaner and then you do have your air cleaner here as well this machine of course is going to live in a very nasty dirty dusty environment so it's nice to see this extra step taken right here if we take a look at what's going down below you are going to have a spring cushion front idler so if you do hit a curb or a stump or a rock it's going to have some give to it be a little bit more comfortable ride and more stable load and you are going to have tie down points right here and up on the front as well for easy trailering. So while we're showing you some access in different areas, I want to give you a little look here at the back side of the machine as well. As you can see all the hydraulic connections going on and filters and your battery location down below. If I was going to pick something apart, I really don't like all these star handled knobs here. I also feel like you can make one solid piece. So I'll probably give some feedback to Bomb Light. I'm sure they're always looking to make continuous improvements and maybe it's something they can incorporate. I will say you want to have some sort of a secure way that provides a very solid connection versus just kind of pinning it in place. Um, you know, with a machine like this, you're going to have a lot of vibration going on. So without a solid firm connection, you're going to hear that vibration, that noise, which would be quite irritating. So I can understand why they chose to go a route like this. So really quick, a few key dimensions. You're going to have about a 40 inch wide unit overall, uh, six and a half inches of ground clearance on the track machine by eight inches of clearance on the wheeled machine to the pin height for the loader as well. It's going to be a little different on the wheeled machine versus the track. 70 inches to pin height for the loader on the wheeled machine versus 76 on the track machine. And overall length on the track machine is about 70 inches long without a bucket or anything on the front. But on the wheeled machine, it's even shorter, only 62 inches front to back. So while I do sell used tractors, this is going to be a brand new unit here. Again, we sell these. We can ship them all over the country. It's going to be priced with a set of forks and with a bucket at $31,999. That pricing is subject to change, but if you want to get a shipping quote, let us know. We can help you out with that too. We sell both the, the Bombalite skid steer and all the attachments for it as well. So with everything going on right now, these do have a relatively long lead time. So plan ahead and get your order in early. So this is my unit, folks. This is just what I'm going to have for a while, playing around with different attachments and testing it out. If I didn't answer your question, leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you or we'll incorporate it into a future video. I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you read the description or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Hey, well, thanks so much for stopping by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. All right, that's a wrap. We got to get this thing greased up. that grease at. I wonder if it's out. Nope, there it is. has to be out of grease. Hey, we're mid grease here. Just want to tell you about this really quick in case you somehow don't know, but this is a loop shuttle greasing system. You're going to see this version is the electric version, but you can just get a regular traditional style as well. Um, however, it's not your traditional grease gun by any stretch. You just take the sheath off, just a protective sheath. You're going to see how easy this is to put a new cartridge on. This is going to be our old cartridge. Just screw it off like this very robust neck that's on here. You can see if you look inside, it's used up virtually all of the grease that's available inside this tube. We got a, a new tube right here we're gonna put on. Take that off. You're just gonna push up. You're just gonna push up on the bottom so it's just right up near the top there. All right, it'll come back down just a touch. The point is it's vacuum based. That's how this whole system, that's how it works. And so you're just gonna take it, screw it right back in. 
And again, whether it's the electric version or the manual style, same concept. Put your sheath back on, and away you go, all right? Best part is there's a link down below where you can buy it direct from the manufacturer. Use code GWT, save 5% off your order. All right, let's get back to it.